the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Hello there and welcome to Mars X 3D. This is your buddy Dave. And if you're new here, we're glad you're here. Somehow you found this very remote and isolated and strange little channel on YouTube where a gathering group of X3D Mars Anomaly aficionados gather on a regular basis to take a jump room, so to speak, to the surface of Mars, where we examine late-breaking anomalies in full stereographic 3D, and you can learn this technique very easily in a couple of minutes right down below. Just click that link for the tutorial, and a couple of minutes from now, you'll have it down, or at least good enough to view it along with us. Now, for those of you who simply cannot do X3D for some reason, we have recently introduced our 3D preview reel which utilize a technique called Wiggle 3D. No need to go into the technology behind it, but it allows most people to see a 2D image in what amounts to 3D. Now, it doesn't even compare with the real X3D, but it sure gives you an idea. And in these preview reels, we will not be doing analyses. We will not be offering citations. We just simply show you the images that will be coming up in the next episode. Okay, this is Oh Holy Night, because it is the Christmas season. And we will be going into just a whole bunch of holes and circles, and good stuff like that, that have been shared with us just recently. So we'd like to ask you to... Uh, just relax your eyeballs into the X3D world, because here we go. We've found any number of these mysterious black screens all over the surface of Mars. Sometimes they look like computer monitors. Other times they're round. Other times, eh, they just don't seem natural. Here's one pointed out by my buddy, Lazl Shabalix, from Percy 610. See what I mean? It really does look like the screen on a, a monitor or some other kind of device. Now, like I said, we've found a number of these, and I'm going to be sharing those with you in our review, end of year review, coming up next week. So. Keep an eye peeled for those. We find all kinds of very odd uh, weathering and geological processes on the surface of Mars. Here's one that James Theis pointed out. And James, forgive me for misspelling your name in the data box. I have thesis on my mind for some reason. But uh, this, this is, doesn't really fit the patterns of what I'm familiar with. So let's zoom in just a bit. Isn't that interesting? How do you get those right angle cracks so perfectly? I suppose it could happen. But you know, with all the odd weathering and other processes we're not familiar with on the surface of Mars, Maybe this is a regular occurrence, but it does remind me of one that Sarah Runcie pointed out that we showed in our episode last week. See what I mean? The same right angle cracks. And uh, of course, this uh, boulder is a lot more obviously shaped and rounded than the other one, to say nothing of that perfect little uh, rhombus there on the right, but uh, I think you see what I mean. I don't think 
This is a geological process. Here's another one from Laszlo from Percy 614 down there in the magenta box. See why I'm calling this one a flawless circle? I mean, how much more perfect do you need to get? So it does beg the question, is this the bottom of a statue? Is it a portion of a pillar, perhaps? And for those of you inclined to look, there are anomalies all throughout this particular uh, uh, GMAC by Neb T. So you'll want to go check those out. Long-time researcher Sarah Runcie pointed out this particular little circular guy there. I mean, this is really small, and you can see the tracks there from Percy. So you get an idea of how tiny this actually is. Let's take a look. That is an absolutely perfect circle, my friends. This is about the size of a, maybe a silver dollar, maybe a little smaller, more like a 50 cent piece. So it does beg the question, is it a coin, an ancient coin of some kind? Whatever it is, this kind of perfection, in terms of it being a circle, is rarely found in nature, especially one that appears to be a disc as opposed to being a sphere. Here's another tiny little miracle that uh, Sarah pointed out just the other day. And as usual, it's right on the edge of the image, which makes it really tough to not only do the 3D, but just to examine it in general. Anyway, we'll zoom in and do what we can with it. Once again, we have a flawless circle with a perfect hole in the center. And look at those two little knobs or holes inside of this. This kind of reminded me of a, a fat button. Who knows what it is? But you know what it isn't? It isn't natural. Here's one that's been making the rounds lately. A really interesting, well, it almost looks like a bust, found by researcher Bob Friedman. I know the uh, temptation to cave in to pareidolia is almost overwhelming. We're so hardwired to see faces. But how do we know that this is the correct orientation? for whatever this is. Is it a random piece of erosion? I kind of think not with those beautiful right angles and bilateral symmetry down there where the mouth seems to be. And we do see carvings and shapes around it that are questionable. And if you take the time to go look at this particular GMAC, you're going to find all kinds of anomalies, but I wanted to share two more that I thought were interesting. Oh, come on, Dave. That's just a rock. Ah, uh -huh, you could be right. But you know, look at those parallel lines, how even they are, and how the face of it, even though it's badly weathered, is perfectly rectangular. And indeed, it does seem to be part of a rectangular block. So, natural? Eh, it could be. But I'm pretty sure it's not. And if you use that block as a clock face, look down at the 7 o'clock position, and you will see a perfect little square with a black screen shining in the sunlight. What in the heck is that? And I thought this one was really interesting. It almost looks like a, a totem, a carving of an animal. It seems to have a mouth on the right side, and it seems to be wearing a little pyramidal hat. You can see an eye, what might be nostrils, 
Well, it might be ears. And the body, it almost looks like kind of a tadpole body or a fish body and with even a fin carved on the left side. If that's all chance, it's pretty cool. I'd pick this up in a heartbeat and put it in my garden. Here's another offering from Lancel Shabalix from Percy 604 inside the green target. Now tell me that shape doesn't just jump out at you. Let's take a little closer look, but before we do, did you notice all this red material inside the boxes? Those are not photographic artifacts. That color is actually there. This is a color balanced image. I sure would like to know what that is. As we get in tight on this particular piece, I'd like you to pay attention to what's inside the box. Notice the crossed lines. This is exactly the type of reticle or machine mark that a stonemason would make prior to drilling a perfect hole exactly through the center, which in fact we do see that hole. And we also see that around that hole it's scooped out a bit. That makes me think that that was meant to fit over a pin or some kind of stabilization joining to another piece. So is this part of a pillar? Is it part of a statue that's face down in the sand? Well, we won't know till we get there. But there's no question in my mind that this is a machined opening. This next find by Sarah Runcie is kind of fun. Take a look at that circle in the lower left and you can get an idea of just how tiny this find is. Let's zoom in. As we look inside the box, you can see what appears to be a face. Now I hope you'll forgive me. But this thing reminds me of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Tell me you see the resemblance too, please. I mean, I'm not completely a whack job, am I? Well, maybe I am, I don't know. But a pretty cool find by Sarah Runcie. And uh, as tiny as it is, well, it could be uh, a carving. It could be erosion. It could be something else, freeze-dried remains. We just don't know. Well, I guess this is kind of turning into the Sarah Runcie show with her co-star, Laszlo Shabalix. But this is another really nice find that Sarah offered us just the other day. As far as I know, this hole was not ground by the sampling tool on Curiosity. In fact, this stone is a good ways off of the rover's path. But you can clearly see an absolutely perfect hole dished out in that rock. That, to me, talks about intelligent agency. And finally, another perfect hole from Sarah Runcie. And you can see it just fine in this context view, but let's go ahead and get closer anyway. You have to ask yourself, why is this hole in this piece? I mean, if it's erosion, how is it that those really thin little sides didn't just break? I think it's something that was stamped through a piece of metal, or possibly a drill hole through stone, and the, the stone is worn away, or the metal is just encrusted with uh, mud fossil. But whatever it is, that's far too perfect a hole to be attributed to natural causes. 
Well, I know you're all busy with holiday stuff, but I do appreciate you taking a, a few moments out of your time to check out our strange little channel. If you saw something you liked today, please take a moment to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the bizarre algorithms that YouTube uses. <laughs> And uh, if you feel like you might want to support this work, well, just click the join button. Real easy, real painless, and it very, very much appreciated, believe you me. And so for all of you proud weirdos out there, you know who you are. Merry Christmas to all, and to all. A good night.